It's not because of you. It's because of Jesus. It's not because of your goodness. It's because of His. The Bible says that a tree of life is a dream fulfilled. You believe Jesus is God and you believe He rose from the dead, you're going to heaven. There's nothing you can do to make God love you any less. He loves you. Hi there, my name is Ben Conway. I'm the lead pastor of Tree of Life Church in Dagenham in Essex. That's in the northeast of London. And I'm also the founder of Tree of Life Family, which is a growing network of growing churches. We have churches right now in Dagenham every weekend, in Guildford every weekend, in Watford every weekend, in Brentwood every weekend, and in Croydon every weekend. We're also planting churches in Cambridge and in Dorset and in Suffolk and in the West Midlands in Eaton. So um, we have at least one meeting a month in all those places and we're building towards weekly church meetings and midweek house groups and uh, we're having a great time. We love planting churches. We love helping people understand God's word. We love setting captives free. We love seeing the sick healed and we love advancing God's kingdom. Well, I'm just really glad you've joined us today on Tree of Life Church TV and uh, we're very glad to have you with us. And this is a second part of a little series I'm doing on the love of God, on the fruit of love that's inside us. Romans 5 says very clearly that the love of God has been shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. And so you might be going, I need more love. No, you don't need more love. You have the love inside you. You've got to stop looking for that love and start believing it's inside you. If you're a born again Christian, that love is inside you. And you need to start living by that love. And if we start living by that love, we're gonna live in victory. In your spirit right now, you're filled with love. And so you need, just need to know what that love is. And the more you know what it is, then the easier it is to follow the spirit and follow that love and walk in life victory and inherit the kingdom of God and change the world. And that's what we're here for. And so that's wonderful and that's exciting. And so 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 4 starts off by saying, Charity suffereth long in the King James and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself is not puffed up. So there's some things we can learn about the love of God. The Amplified is beautiful. The Amplified reading of 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 8, it says this, Love endures with patience and serenity. Love is kind and thoughtful, is not jealous or envious. Love does not brag and is not proud or arrogant. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not provoked nor overly sensitive and easily angered. It does not take into account a suffered wrong. It does not rejoice in justice, but rejoices with the truth when righteousness and truth prevail. Love bears all things regardless of what comes. Love believes all things, looking for the best in everyone, hopes all things, remains steadfast during difficult times, endures all things without weakening. Love never fails. It never fades or ends. But as for prophecies, they'll pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for the gift of special knowledge, it will pass away. And if you start to fill your mind with those words, if you start to read that every day, you will start to see what love is. And the love inside you will start to lead you. And you will understand that love, that spiritual love. And that's good. That's really good. And you'll start to live that love and things will end up better for you. Your life is always better when you walk in the spirit and walk in love than if you walk in the flesh and walk in selfishness. Always. Because you walk in the flesh, according to Galatians 5, that's what we talked about last week, you'll bite and devour one another. You'll destroy each other. You walk in love, you'll edify one another. You'll build one another up. You'll encourage one another. You'll comfort one another. You'll love one another. You'll be kind and patient for one another. I love how that starts. It says, love endures but with patience and serenity. I know some people who endure some stuff, but you would not call them patient. You would not call them serene. You know, you would, they don't know the love of God. They're, they're putting up with some stuff. They're enduring some things, but they are not serene. They are, they're enduring long because they don't know what else to do. But the whole world, the whole world and their dog knows that person is enduring. Uh, you know, sometimes I, I do marriage counseling 
and one of the marriage partners is behaving badly, they're acting up, and the other's enduring, they're enduring long, but often they're not peaceful with that enduring, and uh, they let the other one know all the time how much they're suffering, they let everybody know how much they're suffering, that's not the love of God, and you have to remind yourself, and you have to put up with someone who's not acting in love to you, and someone who's bad to you, and you have to love them and endure, and how do I do that with peacefulness and serenity? You have to remind yourself, well, God puts up with all of us, I mean, he never lets us know. He's never unkind about it. You know, some of you are listening to this and making the decision, I'm going to walk in love. God is not going, well, it's about time to. It's about time to. They start walking in love. For goodness sakes, I've had to put up with them for so long. No, God's not like that. God endures long. He is love, and he endures long with peacefulness and serenity. God is not going, well, it's about time to. And if you have the nature of God, you shouldn't be saying that either. You shouldn't be walking and talking those things. God's love doesn't fade while it's enduring long. It doesn't get tired and ratty and narky while it's enduring wrong, long. It's, it's, it never fails. The love of God never fails. And that love is inside you right now. You might not be able to feel it. You might not be able to see it. But it is there. The Word of God says it's there. And if you believe the Word and walk in faith and start to believe that the love's inside you, that fruit of love comes out of you. And I tell you what, you bear all things no matter what happens. And that's powerful. You know, sometimes someone will come to me and say, I just can't love that person anymore. If you're born again Christian, that's a lie. If you're born again Christian, you can love forever because the love of God is inside your heart. No, I can't put up with her anymore. No, you can endure long and be peaceful and serene. The love of God is inside you. The ability to bear all things is inside you, regardless of what comes. That's what the Bible says, and that's what we need to start believing as Christians. We need to stop living the world's definition of love, this low definition of love, and start living the God definition of love. How many of you know the God kind of love, the God love, the love of God that's inside you, that's never gone to a divorce court. That's never split a church. That's never ruined someone else's life deliberately. You know, and I've got to remind myself, you know, I, I'm pastoring hundreds of people across our church network. And uh, sometimes I have to remind myself, I've got to put up with this, put up with that. And I think, well, God puts up with billions of us, including me. And when I'm not loving, and when I take a while to get it, and when I'm whatever, you know. So I just remember how patient God is with me. And that helps me walk in that same love for other people. The love of God bears all. When you start thinking of what God has to put up with every day, it's going to make you start laughing. You know, God is the pastor of all of us and what he has to deal with, oh my goodness, you know. And so God, all God's asking us to do is he put that love inside us. All he's asking us to do is walk in it. All he's asking us to do is believe it. That's, that's actually quite easy. He, God, God's not asking you to do something he's not doing. He doesn't ask you to forgive someone and then he's not going to forgive them. He forgives. He's asking you to forgive because he's already forgiven you. In Christ, you're already forgiven. He said, love one another. And you can love one another. Do you know why? Because the love is inside you already. The love's already there. And the love inside you can bear all things. That's the truth. That's what the Word of God says. I'll tell you what, there's been days I wanted to quit the ministry. I'm looking at you now, and you're watching me, and you think, really? You know, look, I want to go back into the city, back into the sales, back into my old environment. I tell you, I haven't been able to because the love of God constrains me to love people, whether my flesh wants to love them or not, whether I feel like it or not, whether I feel I've got the strength or not. I have the love of God in my spirit, and the love of God inside me can bear all things. So I've kept going through the persecution, through the attacks, through the lies, through the backstabbing, through being let down by people. And you know what? Love does not, 1 Corinthians 13 verse 8, does not behave unseemly and does not seek her own. Your flesh, oh, all it wants to do is seek its own. But your spirit just wants to love and just wants to never seek its own. That's why your spirit and flesh are at war. You know, hell, what is Hell. Hell is a bunch of people abandoned to their flesh, all about them. Everything's about them. Heaven is a bunch of people abandoned to their spirit. Everyone in heaven is going to want to help you and encourage you and bless you. And it's going to be beautiful. The Amplified says this, Love does not insist on its own rights and is not self-seeking. 
The agape of God is not selfish. It's not self-seeking. It never puts itself first. Some people are always putting themselves first. They're always putting them first, always self-seeking. Well, those people are living out of the flesh, and according to Galatians 5, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God manifests when we listen to the Spirit inside us, and we walk in love, we walk in the life of that Spirit, and we do not insist on our own rights. There's so many times we just live a normal life, just like every other human on the planet. It. But you, listen to me, you're not normal. You're not normal. That's why you're watching Christian TV right now, because you're not normal. You don't want to be normal. You don't want to be the same as everyone else. You don't want to be just like your neighbors. You don't want to keep up with the Joneses. You want the love of God to come out of you, and you want to be different. You want to stand out. You want to be radical for Jesus. Well, the most radical for Jesus you can be is to love your neighbor as yourself. The most radical for Jesus you can be is to not insist on your own rights and not be self-seeking. It, it's that simple. It's to walk in love. That's what is completely opposite to everything going on in the world. It's completely opposite to your own flesh. The spirit inside you, you let it out of you and you start walking in love. And so many times when you hear Christians and they sound just like the rest of the world, I know my rights, I know my rights, I got my rights, I got my rights. Love does not insist on its own rights. Love does not insist on its own rights. That's what the Bible says. Agape does not insist on its own rights. As long as you, as long as I, as long as anyone is insisting on their rights, they are not in the love of God. They're not walking in the love of God, and therefore they'll never live the fullness of the faith life because faith works by love. They'll never benefit from being able to move mountains or speaking in tongues won't change their life. You, you'll never be able to convince me, listen, you'll never be able to convince me that you really believe that God loves you until you stop insisting on your rights all the time. Let God be the one to exalt you. Let God be the one to promote you. You know, I had a situation several years ago where someone, one individual was attacking my church. I mean, just attacking my church. Most people don't know about this. I never told anyone at the time. He attacked my family. He attacked my son. He attacked my children. Um, he locked one of my children in a room. He, he caused people to leave my church because he told so many lies about me. This man was just so vicious and so nasty. He, he broke my relationship with other ministers. Um, but again, just by telling lies. Some of the stuff's only been repaired this year. And I'm telling you now, especially especially when it was an attack on my family and my boys. There were three times, and I'm being honest with you now, you can shoot me down because I'm being honest, I'm just telling you the truth. There were three times I got in my car and I was going to drive around to him and I was going to punch him in the face and sort him out. I was going to not be in love, uh, especially the stuff of my family. I was really in the flesh. I really was angry. Um, but I couldn't. I got in the car and I couldn't drive. I couldn't move. I couldn't get, to, I couldn't do anything. Do you know why? Because the love of God has been shed abroad in my heart. And I will not take an action to destroy another person. And you know, I don't, I, you know, what you do when you don't know what to do is you pray in tongues. That's what I always do when I don't know what to do. And if you can't pray in tongues, you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you need to be filled with the Spirit and pray in tongues. Give us a call, we'll pray with you. We'll get you filled with the Spirit and speaking with tongues over the telephone. That's no problem, we've done that many times before. But I just prayed in tongues and prayed in tongues, prayed in tongues. And you know, here's the good news. When you pray in tongues, you're praying in the Spirit. If you're praying in the Spirit, you're praying in love because God is love and God is Spirit. Therefore, Spirit and love are the same. Therefore, when you pray in the Spirit, you're praying in pure love. You know, when you pray in tongues, you're never praying, smash their teeth, Lord because you're praying in love. When you pray in tongues, you're never praying, oh God, sort them out, deal with them, get them, get them now, because you're praying in love. And I started praying in love and praying in love, and God spoke to me. And he said, you'll have three chances to knock this man over, but you must not take them. Your hands are not to push something over, not to break, but to rebuild. And those three chances happened. I had the chance to expose some of the stuff he was doing. He wasn't just treating me badly, he was treating a lot of people badly. But I'm so glad, I'm so glad, looking back at that whole situation, I'm so glad I followed the love of God. I'm so glad because the Bible says when you walk in the Spirit, you do not 
fulfill the lust of the flesh. And it says, if you do the lust of the flesh, Galatians 5, you don't inherit the kingdom. And I'm telling you now that some of the prosperity in this ministry, some of the advancement in this ministry, the fact that you're watching me on TV now is because I refused to walk in the flesh and I walked in love. And some of you are desperate to get promoted in your ministry, desperate to get promoted at work, desperate just to be promoted in life. And that's, that's a God-given dream. God wants you to dream big, absolutely. God wants you to have big things. But if you're always pushing and pressing, that's the flesh. Learn to live in love. Learn to love one another. Learn to treat your neighbor better than yourself. Learn not to take offense. Learn not to carry around uh, a suffered wrong, and I tell you, God will exalt you. God will promote you. I don't get it right all the time any more than anyone watching this. I absolutely don't, but I'm, I'm not where I used to be. You know, I haven't arrived, but I've definitely departed. And, um, you know, the love of God is inside me 100%, just like it's inside you 100%, and we can learn to yield to it and live by it, and we can do this, amen? We can win. We can walk in love to such a way that the UK, that Europe, that the world will never be the same again. And look what it says there in 1 Corinthians 13. It says, love takes no account of the evil done to it. Love does not pay attention to a suffered wrong. Your spirit never cares when someone wrongs you. Have you not? But your flesh does. Have you noticed that? Or oh, your flesh loves to get obsessed with suffered wrongs. Your flesh makes lists of suffered wrongs. They did this. They did this. I know you wanted to tune in today and have a great healing message and a message on prosperity and a message on the goodness of God. And uh, I'd, I'd like to preach a message on those things. But I had to study and I had to prepare this message because God wants us to walk in love. And, you know... While I was writing these messages, while I was getting ready to come here, I'm dealing with people messing me about on room hire. We hire 11 venues a month. I'm dealing with my family, my kids. I'm dealing with, I've, I've, I've had difficulties with pain in my body. I, I pulled a muscle at the gym. I'm having to deal with people who don't know me, never supported me in my life, but feel they have the right to publicly write me letters, public letters to correct me. But here is the thermometer of love. Are you touchy and resentful and fretful or you just don't take account of a suffered wrong? You just learn to live with it and you say, you know what, I'm going to do what God called me to do. And you want to have a go at me? I love you anyway. You want to slap me? Here's the other cheek. I want to walk in the love of God. And that's the gauge of love is if you've got a checklist of suffered wrongs, you are not walking in love. If you have a checklist of they did this to me, they did, I've been to some churches and someone's telling me what someone's done wrong to them and you think it happened yesterday and then you find out it happened 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. That person is in the flesh. They're never going to inherit the kingdom. Your spirit does not ever take attention to a suffered wrong. So walk in the spirit. Believe God. Believe that the love of God's inside you. Believe that God is love. Believe that your spirit is reborn. You're a child of God. The DNA of love is one strand of your spiritual DNA, and you can love people just like God can love people. The more you start believing that, the more it'll start letting go of that list of suffered wrong, and the more you'll start serving and loving the happier you'll be, the happier all your family will be, the happier your church will be, the more friends you'll make, the more you'll inherit the kingdom, blessings will come your way, you'll heal the sick, life will change. This is important stuff. Now, human love, that love that's not with God, you know, that doesn't believe the best about everyone, does it? No. Human love looks for the worst. It looks for gossip on people. And you need to learn that habit. I refuse to believe anything bad about other people. You need to learn that habit. Did you hear about Ashish? Ah, I refuse to believe anything bad about other people. I tell you, if other Christians took that attitude, the world would be so much better. And more often than not, it's just a rumor. It was just made up by jealous, petty people. God's love says, I believe the best about them. God's love says, I believe the best. I tell you, I've been pilloried just for believing the best about other people. Now, you know about this minister, you know about that. I believe the best about them. That's just the love of God. That's just the love of God in my spirit. I believe the best. And you need to let that love of God out of you and start believing the best. If you're watching this program to find something to criticize, something to correct, something to rebuke. I'm sure you'll find something. But the problem is, you're sitting there in the flesh. You don't know how to pay no attention to a suffered wrong. You don't know how to believe the best of everyone. Learn to live in the love inside you. God's love says, I believe the best. And I'll tell you what, I am so glad that God believes the best about me. Oh, that makes me happy. You know, some people will tell me that I'm weak sometimes because I, I think the best about people. I won't pay attention to a suffered wrong. That's not weakness. That's the strongest strength 
you have. That's the force of love and it never fails. And it's in your DNA. It's in your reborn DNA. If you're a born again Christian, you were born in love to a God of love and your reborn spirit's nature is love. You're one spirit with Christ. He was love and is love. And so you are love and you can love anyone. When you don't know they did to me, don't care. You've got the love of God inside you. People tell me sometimes, well, I wouldn't part with that if I was you. Go and sort them out. And no, I, I, I didn't put up with anything. They said stuff, but I wasn't listening. I was too busy walking in love. You know, well, he sure told you off, didn't he? No, I wasn't paying attention to him. I just didn't get in strife with him. Never pay attention to a suffered wrong. It's the best way to live. I've seen people forfeit and lose their destiny because they're constantly stopping their journey of life, whatever it is God's called them to, they're stopping that journey to pay attention to a suffered wrong. Let it go. People have come to Tree of Life Church to steal money, and you know what? I've given it to them. Let it go because I will not pay attention to a suffered wrong. Love takes no account of a suffered wrong. The minute you get yourself involved in bringing someone else down, you cut yourself off from the floor of the spirit and you don't start to walk in the kingdom. I don't want to live my life with an open door to Satan. I lived decades of my life with an open door to Satan and I'm not going back to that. I will not go back to that. I'm going to let the Lord take care of me. And I told the three people who wanted me to help bring this guy down, I said, I'm not playing a part. I will not push the train over. I'm just going to be believing for his success, believing for his life victory. I phoned him up and I said, people are trying to push you over. People are trying to get you. And I said, I'll be your friend. I'll help you. I'll teach you how to walk in victory. Um, you know, and that's what I do. And that's how you walk in love and that's how you walk in victory. You know, if a pastor curses me or backstabs me, gets upset, how dare you plant in my town? I just give money to their church. I bless them. I make declarations of life over them. I speak love over them. Some of you watching this, you've got to start forgiving some people because you've got all these grudges inside you. You're trapped in your flesh and the love of God inside you is trapped and it can't get out. And that's what's going to bring you love and joy and peace and patience. And it's just going to bring your life so much happiness. So what you need to do is you need to start blessing these people. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who persecute you. And that's what you need to be like. You need to be like David. I will not touch the Lord's anointed. I will not come at the, the, the Saul and, and harm him. He's standing the way of your destiny, David. Get him out of the way. No, God will promote me. God will get me to the right place at the right time. I'm not pushing someone out of the way. I just believe God, and God is good. God loves me, you know. I will not touch the anointed, Lord's anointed, even if they're stupid, even if they're morons, even if they're fleshly and backslidden like Saul. I won't do it. I've got too much love, you see. And, you know, you try your best to love people. And here's the thing. Why not? You treated God worse, and he's never stopped loving you. Love always brings peace and brings victory. And some people say, what are you doing? I say, I'm walking in love. Love never fails. Love always wins. So learn to walk in love. And you'll find the things that guy tried to break in my life and ministry, they're the strongest parts of my life and ministry now. Because love never fails. Love always wins. That was better than letting strife consume me. Honestly, I could have lost my whole ministry, lost the whole church could have died if I got consumed by strife because one guy went out of his way to destroy me. I was, there's a church I know closing its doors right now because the pastor got himself in strife and bitterness because somebody came at him. And it wasn't that somebody who came at him that destroyed the church. It was the pastor's refusal to stand in love. And it's not the people coming at you that are destroying your life. Well, they destroyed my life. They no, it's your attitude attitude and your refusal to walk in love. 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 1 says this, eagerly pursue and seek to gain this love, the Amplified Bible, eagerly pursue and seek to gain this love, make it your aim, your great quest. I tell you, if everyone watching this TV program today said, I'm going to make it my great quest to walk in the love of God. You know, isn't it great that some of you here want to win at life, want to be the best in life, want to win at ministry, want to be the best at this, want to achieve well. I agree with all that. I believe in dreaming big. I believe in you having your dreams come true. But make love your highest quest. Make being the most loving person on the, the, the planet your great quest. Your great quest in life should be, how do I pursue agape? How do I walk in agape? I know God put it in there, so I'm going to let it out. And I'll tell you what, when that love of God is in you and flows out of you, anyone can change. The hardest of people can be softened. The most violent criminal can be calmed. You start loving your wife like this, it might even change your wife. It might even change your husband. Wow, that'd be a miracle. Amen. Come on, some of you know what I'm talking about. Stop letting the flesh 
dominate your marriage. Stop letting the flesh dominate you. Start living in the spirit. And some of you right now, as you're watching this program, love is being restored right now. The love of God that's already inside you is just coming to dominate. Some of you are just forgiving people right now. You just make that choice to forgive. Ephesians 4 verse 32 says, forgive even as Christ in Christ Jesus has forgiven you. Just make that choice to walk in love. Make that choice to forgive, to love. Start seeing yourself being kind to that person. Start seeing the love of God flowing from you to them. And I tell you, that same choice to walk in the spirit and not walk in the flesh will open up the door to miracles in your life, will open up the door to great promotions, to great success. But it starts here. It starts when you say, I'm going to make love my highest quest. I'm, I'm fed up of living a lukewarm life and I want to live the most on fire life for Jesus I can. And the most on fire you can be for Jesus is to choose love, to walk in agape. Well, it's been absolutely awesome being with you today and um, talking about love and talking about these things of love. It's so important that we understand this and we start putting it into our life. I mean, Andrew Murray, the, the, the great um, uh, South African preacher and, and author, most of you probably have an Andrew Murray book in your house somewhere. He, he got up every morning and started his day by reading 1 Corinthians 13. I tell you, that can't harm anyone listening to this program. That wouldn't make your life be worse. It would only make your life worse better. And you start reading that love is patient, love is kind, love takes no account of a suffered wrong. And you start putting that into your life, I tell you, you'll be changed forever. Well, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love for you to make contact with us. And if you want us to pray with you and agree with you that you're going to make love your great quest, or if there's someone in your life you're struggling to forgive and you just want someone to stand with you and pray with you, that you would receive that strength to forgive. God always gives it, but you sometimes need to just be able to receive it. Then give us a call. There's our phone number there. And uh, we've got our phone number for America as well. We've also got a text message number as well if you want to text me and we'll, we'll respond as quickly as we can because we want to get to you and help you and everyone who contacts Tree of Life, you know, if these programs, just, they're just a blessing to you. Just want to just phone us up and say thank you for blessing us. Then everyone who contacts us, we give you a free CD and uh, we give you a CD and you can just uh, use that and uh, you know, it's a sermon of mine from a Sunday morning service and you can be blessed by that. Or you can go to our website www.tree.church Our website has hundreds of our Hours of messages on there, hundreds of hours of messages about all sorts of things, healings and miracles, uh, prosperity, changing your life, walking for Jesus, living in holiness. I'm doing a series uh, at the moment on the fruit of the Spirit, some of the stuff that I'm preaching today is from there, and uh, that's going to be several hours of teaching, and that's all freely available on our website. The other thing on our website is we are a church that has a lot of conferences. We believe in the power of God's word. We believe in getting God's word into people. Every year we have two big conferences. One's a leadership conference uh, to help train you to be a leader, and the other one's a healing and revival conference. And um, you want to get yourself to those conferences. You want to find out about them. We're doing a Building Healthy Relationships conference in Guildford later this year. We're doing an evangelism, how to evangelize people, how to share your faith with people. Um, we do that every year. And the last two years, we've taken the people we've trained, we've taken them on the streets and seen over a hundred people born again on the streets of Dagenham just through going out there and just people have just been trained for a couple of days. Some of these people have never led anyone to the Lord. People are texting their friends and family. People are leading their brothers and their parents and children to the Lord just by this wonderful conference. And uh, so we're having some great stuff going on. So I recommend you go to our website www.tree.church and, and check out some of the stuff we've got on and check out some of our prize recordings, check out some of our articles and so on and so forth, and you're always more than welcome to pay us a visit. It would be lovely to see you. Okay, well, never forget, you know, all this talk about love, remember that the source of all love is God. 1 John 4 verse 10 says, not that, he, not that we loved him first, but he loved us first. The source of love is God, and Jesus loves you. He's on your side, and great things are going to happen to you today. Thank you for tuning in. It's been good to have you with us.